Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned, AUVSI says Exponential 2021 is a go. Also, FAA awards nearly $2 million to Embry-Riddle Drone Safety Project. And NASA offers guidance for drone use. Hi, I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. Welcome to the Air News Network's Airborne Unmanned program, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned in partnership with AUVSI, the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. Here's some good news. AUVSI says Exponential 2021 is a go. ANN has received a communication from AUVSI in which they state, as exponential approaches in less than two weeks, we're closely monitoring COVID trends globally and locally in Atlanta. We want to confirm for our community that we are proceeding as planned with the event and to share some pertinent information. They go on to say that mandates that the city of Atlanta has recently announced are aligned with the health safety plan they've already set in place, reinforcing their efforts to keep attendees safe while engaging on site. As a state-operated facility, the Georgia World Congress Center is not subject to city mandates and will operate in full compliance with Expo's health safety plan. While not required, AUVSI has strongly encouraged all exponential participants to be fully vaccinated before attending and to review all safety reminders in our show policies. They also go on to say, if you are not feeling well, please stay home. AUVSI promises to continue to closely monitor the situation. CDC and state guidelines, and will provide updates if anything changes. ANN will, of course, be there with a full news crew. See you there. Coming up after the break, NASA and Boeing working to get OFT2 launch ready. Details after these messages. When adventure is calling, the Bori by Aero Volga is the plane you need to answer the call. Bori's composite design is simple, reliable, and economical with impressive performance and no gimmicks. Designed for the wilderness and proven durability in a flight around the Arctic Circle, the Bori has what it takes to handle your next adventure. Featuring two large cargo compartments, a comfortable modern cockpit, and a Rotax 912 power plant, the Bori Amphibian is now available in Canada. Experience the Bori for yourself at flightsimple.com. In Diamond Aircraft, innovation is in our DNA. Whether you're taking to the skies for training or business travel, every aircraft in Diamond's lineup features innovative technology, an industry-leading safety record, superior performance and efficiency, and a comfortable flying experience. No other company has pioneered as many aviation firsts, achieved more milestones, or received the same amount of industry praise as Diamond. Discover why Diamond Aircraft is one of the most trusted manufacturers in aviation at diamondaircraft.com. I believe that if people use the Landing Doctor Training Program, they will have less accidents and eventually their insurance will go down and they will make a superior pilot. We do personal limitation checklists, which is the most important reason you need to fly with limits. We do ground proximity awareness training and we do this with a crosswind. We've been operating six Bristels for two years without one insurance claim. The Landing Doctor program is working, and you're going to hear more about it. Welcome back. In the next Unmanned Minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. I'll tell to abandon Evo One support starting in 2022. Autel recently noted the end of availability and end of service timelines for the first generation Evo model. As of December 31, 2021, the first generation Evo will enter its end of availability phase. This means that the product and its accessories will no longer be made available for purchase to customers. It may still be found in stock at some retailers, but all sales of Autel will be halted. June of 2022 is the expected time frame for the first generation Evo to enter its end of service phase. NASA and Boeing still trying to understand SM valve performance issue. NASA continues to work side by side with Boeing to understand the CST-100 Starliner service module valve performance. 
including the unexpected indications some of the valves were in close position during its August 3rd launch attempt of Orbital Flight Test 2. With troubleshooting ongoing at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida, where Starliner will be powered and run through various procedures to help understand the issue, NASA will move forward with the launch and birthing of an important cargo mission to the ISS. We all knew this was coming. TSA wants to get involved with drones too. Transportation Security Administration Law Enforcement, the Connecticut State Police, and the Connecticut Air National Guard participated in a joint drone detection practical exercise on Thursday, August 5th. The unmanned aviation systems team designed the exercise to assess the Air Guard's 103rd Security Forces Squadron's ability to respond to a drone incursion on their base at Bradley International Airport. UAVionics receives FAA TSO for Certified Drone GPS Receiver. UAVionics has received a technical standard order from the FAA for its true FYX GPS receiver for UAS. The satellite-based augmentation system, Wide Area Augmentation System, Capable GPS is reportedly the first to specifically target UAS platform, navigation, and surveillance solutions. Small, the TSO C145E Class Beta 1 GPS weighs in at only 20 grams, which includes the receiver, antenna, and DO160G power supply and interface protection circuits. That was our Unmanned Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. FAA awards nearly $2 million to Embry-Riddle Drone Safety Project. As the FAA develops policies to safely integrate unmanned aircraft systems or drones into the national airspace system, Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University will be providing critical data to achieve that goal. Having been awarded almost $2 million for a research project that will involve Dr. Ryan Wallace, Associate Professor of Aeronautical Science, and 11 other Embry-Riddle faculty members. In order to accommodate the safe operation of SUAS within the NAS, the FAA relies on accurate risk assessment data, Wallace explained. Quoting from a 2018 National Academies of Science report, he added, assessing risk is far easier when the risk is well quantified by relevant empirical data. Current available data for small UAS operations is expensive to collect, scarce and non-existent, and in some cases, not very reliable. Wallace and his Embry-Riddle colleagues will provide the much-needed research and documentation of SUAS operations. This research project seeks to close the data gap by collecting empirical SUAS traffic data to aid the FAA in forecasting, planning, risk assessment, and estimating compliance rates to existing and future regulations, Wallace said. The award for the project is being administered through the FAA's Alliance for System Safety of UAS Through Research Excellence, a program known as Assure, which involves Embry-Riddle and other universities. After these messages, because people still don't know how to follow the rules, especially during rocket launches, NASA offers guidance. More after the break. Whether you're charting a steady course or pushing for the ceiling, Hartzell Propeller has been elevating flight for over 100 years. It's in our passion for engineering and research. It's in our dedication to testing the limits of performance and creating propellers that are as safe as they are sexy. Now, together with our dedicated family of companies, we're propelling the future of aviation. We are Hartzell Propeller, built on honor. Aviation Safety Resources is disrupting the market for aircraft emergency parachute recovery systems. ASR systems are smaller, lighter weight, and offer longer repack cycles than similar products available in the current market. ASR has a recovery system available for every type of aircraft. Sport, experimental, light sport, general aviation, urban air mobility, vertical takeoff and landing, electric propulsion, and unmanned aerial systems. Find the right product for your aircraft at AviationSafetyResources.com. 
Are you ready to ace your FAA drone pilot knowledge test, get your remote pilot certificate, and start earning money? Well, flying a drone is a great tool that can open up new business opportunities for anyone. Realtor, insurance adjuster, videographer, or commercial weekend drone warrior, you need to fly legally. Whether you're pursuing your initial Part 107 remote pilot certificate or you need a renewal, King Schools has a course just for you. So start learning today at kingschools.com. Welcome back. It goes without saying that drone operators are being urged to exercise caution if using their aircraft to view the latest and Terry's rocket launch and avoid flying over the public and NASA's Wallops Flight Facility property. Drones, also known as unmanned aerial systems, should not fly over NASA's Wallop Flight Facility property. The marsh areas between Wallops Island and the mainland or over the Atlantic Ocean east of Wallops Island. A temporary flight restriction and other special use airspace will be activated by the Federal Aviation Administration. Fines and penalties are applicable and will be enforced. There will be several thousand people in the area viewing the launch. Public safety is paramount and drones should not fly over crowds. The Wallops Range is committed to making sure that the viewing public is safe and that drones do not pose a threat to the success and safety of launch operations. Well, that does it for our show today. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. Make sure to follow our YouTube channel and you can catch episodes of Airborne on Roku and Fire TV. We hope you enjoy the show. We'll see you next time.